All right, so let's just continue from where we stopped. <clears throat> so we're looking at how what happens, what we are proclaiming when we are partaking uh, in the Lord's table. And so one drop of the blood of Jesus destroys everything Satan can do. The cup we drink is a cup that brings blessings into our life. The bread we eat is us sharing the finished work of Christ made available to us. So we can expect the Holy Spirit to administer this full blessings of the finished work of the cross into our lives. So now, this is the importance, this is what we are supposed to be proclaiming while partaking in the Lord's table. But probably the Corinthian believers were more like discussing to each other, discussing with each other, or talking about things that happened over the week. Uh, and they were not taking it in an unworthy manner. Right Now, what happens when we are dishonoring the Lord's table? We look at one, uh, you know, there's sickness. Paul himself says there are many among you who are sick and who are dying prematurely because of this, right? Now, when we blatantly dishonor what is sacred uh, and making it a time of feasting with no focus on examining our own life or what the Lord Jesus did for us, we fail to receive the intended blessings that God has through this, through the Lord's table, right? So we must understand God's dealing of judgment as both withdrawal of divine protection, God permitting uh, you know, the enemy to work in our lives. Uh, and 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 you know, now I'm not saying that every sickness is because you know, maybe some of us, you know, we may have some kind of a sickness in our body. I'm not saying that all sicknesses is because we didn't partake in the Lord's table in the right honorable way. No, we may have partaken. But what we're doing is when we don't partake in the wrong way, we are in the right way. We are stepping outside the divine protection of God. Again, we are making ourselves vulnerable for the enemy. Right? Because it's just like eating food. Like we're not partaking of it in the right way. And two, we are allowing the enemy to engage with his work in our lives so he can bring weakness, weakness in the mind, suicidal thoughts, depression, fear, doubt. Then he can bring sickness. He can bring premature death. And he can do, he, you know, the enemy can. Now, God is allowing all this. He's permitting it, right? Now, when we understand that certain things are going not right, we must understand that, hey, maybe I'm outside the will of God, outside the protection of God, right? Now, maybe I'm not in God's will. I'm not walking in obedience. There's some things. That is why I mean, partake in the Lord's table. There, there needs to be that own self. Uh, we need to look into our own life. God, these are the things. Uh, that I'm doing and I pray that you will lead me so so if we judge ourselves and we walk in obedience we can avoid these things the Corinthian church was completely out of order first was disobedience what was intended for blessings turned into a curse to them God permitted these things only so that he disciplines them and make sure that you know they get back on the right path and do it the right way. And we thank God for the Apostle Paul, right? He didn't say, you know, uh, you know, okay, partake in the Lord's table. I've taught you how to do it, do it. No. But he brought correction. He tried to make the believers understand. Now, if you look at uh, the second letter, he talks about how, you know, uh, uh, he how as believers they were obedient to the instructions that he had given them, right? So he's he's giving them instructions and he's also encouraging them, saying, "Don't when you started off well, you started off good. Why do you want to put yourself outside of God's protection, outside of God's will? Doing it is good, but do it in the right way, right?" And so. 
Paul is bringing discipline there, right? So as leaders, as pastors, especially pastors in a church, if you feel that there are people in your church who, who are taking it in an unworthy manner, right? Sit with them, talk to them, help them to understand what it is, right? Uh, now, what you can do is just teach them, right? Something that we do in APC is if somebody wants to partake in uh, water baptism, we teach them why is it important. Just a small uh, half an hour, just, just a simple teaching, right? And we also, very importantly, we teach about the Lord's table as well, right? So as believers today, we do not have to fear weakness, sickness, premature death because of wrongly participating participating in the Lord's table simply because you and I have learned it you know learned to partake in the Lord's table in the right way right it is not that God is waiting for the smallest mistake you know to pour out his judgment on us but rather when we celebrate the Lord's table we must say God I thank you that you have forgiven my sins now I'm redeemed I have a right standing before God you know, sometimes I, I've spoken to many believers where they say, you know, Pastor, I've done some of the most terrible sins. How can I partake of this? How can I partake in the Lord's table? I feel unworthy. Yes, that feeling may come because we've just been living in sin. But it's just that opportunity where we can say, because of my unworthiness, Christ took up the price for me. So when we are partaking, we can take it in confidence, proclaiming those few points right, that we talked about. So our sin must not cause us to run away from God, but it must cause us to run to God. Now, all of us, um, you know, we are weak in the flesh. We will commit sin, right? Uh, but we can always go back, learn from our mistakes. When we partake in the Lord's table, believe and accept and receive the blessings of the cross upon your life, right? So any questions about the Lord's table? Okay, so I'm glad that all of us uh, are partaking in the right way. So wherever, maybe in your church, in your small group, maybe with your family, when you partake of, the, partake of it, it's just probably just five minutes, right? You can, five or 10 minutes, you just partake in a worthy manner. Uh, Self-examine yourself. It's, remember what Jesus did, and those just just five minutes is so powerful. Uh, you're just opening your life to the blessings of the cross uh, to just pour out in our lives, right? So praise God. We thank God for the cross. Right. Let's move into chapter twelve. Now is interesting. This is a, a wonderful chapter because here we talk about the the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right? And so Pastor has also written a book, Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so you can also read that book and uh, uh, you know, learn more and understand more. Now, Paul is going from the Lord's table after correcting them. Now we see that he's probably uh, cooled down a bit and he's trying to you know, help them to understand the gifts of the Spirit, right? Uh, so he's just moving from there because he was quite stern. And I, you can just make out in his letter, it's so beautiful. He, it's quite stern. Now he's saying, okay, we, we will be weak, but here's what the Holy Spirit has for you. right? And he's just bringing it uh, in a continuation here. So verse 12, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to those dumb idols however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking of the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Right. So let's stop there, and we'll and we'll see those uh, gifts of the Spirit uh, 
after this, right? So the, the Greek word spiritual means pneumatic cause, which means non-carnal or which means supernatural. Uh, so now we're talking about spiritual gifts, right? So there is natural gifts which God has given us. And then there's the spiritual gifts. Now, maybe some of us, uh, you know, all of us in each each and every person in this world have certain gifts. It, it could be singing, dancing, music, writing, speaking, um, anything. Right? These are all gifts that are naturally we are, we are, we are, we have it with us. Right? It's inborn. Leadership is another wonderful gift. Right? But now Paul is saying there are spiritual gifts. Paul reminds in verse 2, Paul is reminding the Corinthian believers of their background, right? You people used to go behind those idols, right? The word dumb here is not what we use, you know, <laughs> it's not an offensive way, but meaning he's just saying they're voiceless, they don't they can't speak, right? Those idols who don't know how to speak, don't know how to express themselves, they can't hear, they don't have anything, they don't have eyes, they don't have a mouth, nothing, right. And you used to worship that. But now in contrast, we are worshiping a living God who speaks, who reveals himself, who demonstrates himself through, uh, through nature and through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So when, when you used to go to, the, uh, to the worship the idols, you used to go worship and come back. But they were dumb. They had no voice. They could not speak there, there was not there was no two-way communication but now when you worship god the father when you worship the living god he's a god who speaks he's a god who demonstrates right now how does he do that through the gifts of this holy spirit right uh and now verse three the holy spirit expresses himself through people as through us as believers we know that the Holy Spirit is at work because when a person speaks by the Holy Spirit, he or she will always glorify God. Right? No one can speak of the Holy Spirit or through the anointing of the Holy Spirit and glorify somebody else. If that does happen, then they are not speaking of the Spirit. Right? So the first guideline in recognizing the gift or the expression of the Holy Spirit is to see whether it glorifies God. Right now, many, many, many times we've heard of prophecies, word of knowledge, right? And sometimes we see that it's glorifying the person, right? Uh, and 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 that's wrong, right? First guideline: Does it glorify God? Does it glorify? the Lord Jesus, right? And, and that which glorifies God is the work of the Holy Spirit, right? Now he goes on, verse 4, there are diversities of the gifts, but the same Spirit. The word gifts again is charisma, uh, charis, which, is, which means grace. There are varieties of gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit who gives it to us. And he gives it to us because of his grace. It's not because of any work that we have done. We don't earn the gifts, right? Now, it does not mean that we don't exercise or we don't, or you know, we be ignorant and we do, and we say, okay, no, I'm not a uh, prophet, so I don't want to prophesy. No, right? We can't say that. Okay, God has only given me the gift of worship, so I will be a worship leader. If God has given you that gift, wonderful. But we must pursue to exercise all the gifts of the Holy Spirit as we serve people. right? Because God gives it to us, His grace. Imagine this, if you're asking, uh, if, a, if a child asks his spiritual father, uh, sorry, uh, just their father uh, for a gift or, or something that he needs, the father will most probably give it to him or her. Right. How much more if we ask our Heavenly Father, God, I want to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, will the Father say, no, uh, you only work in this gift? No, He wants us to flow in all the gifts. Right. So He's saying there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same Holy Spirit. 
it's not one gift for one holy spirit if you have this holy spirit you'll have prophecy if you have this holy spirit you'll have word of knowledge it's, that's not how it works same one spirit with all the nine gifts right now there are differences in ministries but the same lord now the word ministries is diconia meaning services or offices right now we must understand uh, Ephesians 4 Paul talks about the fivefold ministry so there are ministry gifts right which is the fivefold ministry and there are uh, you know uh, the spiritual gifts the ministry gift is for used usually for that ministry right so for example what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say Billy Graham, Reverend Billy Graham? I'm sure most of us would have had this picture of the evangelist and the thousands and thousands of people that he ministered to. So we know that he had the ministry gift, the office of the evangelist. right? So now, are you and I called to evangelize? Yes. Why? Because Jesus says, go and make disciples. He's called all of us to go reach out and be evangelists. Right? So that's the gift. And then there's a ministry gift right? where some people are called for that. So there's a difference between Billy Graham and there's a difference when we minister, maybe go as an evangelist, right? just reaching out to people. Both are important, but there's a greater grace on this person because it's a gift. It's a ministry gift. The Apostle Paul was an apostle, right? But why is it that Barnabas didn't do as much as uh, Apostle Paul? Why isn't that Peter didn't do as much as Apostle Paul? Peter also was flowing in the gifts of the Spirit, and he was a leader, an apostle in the church. But we, we could see that there was this additional grace of this ministry gift just so working so powerfully in the person. Of Apostle Paul as an apostle, right? So there's ministry gifts and there are uh, ministry functions, right? So those are two things: ministry gifts, ministry functions, right? So all of us can flow in the fivefold ministry, but there will be people who will be really called to do one specific, uh, you know, uh, with one specific office. And there are diversities of activities, but the same God who works in all. Right, the same spirit is the source of all the different gifts. Sorry, the same Lord Jesus, the same Father, and we also can ask God to minister these gifts to us. Right now, gifts, ministries, operations. Right, uh, so there's this wonderful example here. Right, an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter. And an auto mechanic, right? These are different administrators. Now, each of them has a toolbox, right? Now, in the toolbox, there is those, you know, you, uh, if you've seen an electrician, they usually have that box when it has the screwdrivers, the hammers, the spanners, and all the things that are needed. Uh, uh, the the stunt gun and everything that is needed for the for the work to be done right so the the carpenter uses the screw and he gets the screws into the uh, screwdriver he gets the screws into the wood the electrician may use it to tighten electrical parts uh and maybe the uh, uh, a, a mechanic can will use it to tighten the screws in the engine now the screwdriver is the same right it's the same screwdriver, same toolbox, but is used for three by three different people for three different purposes. Right? Now the electrician uses it to probably tighten or to test the flow of current or whatever. And you've got a carpenter, he's using that screwdriver to push the nail into the wood. And you've got a mechanic, auto mechanic, he's looking at the parts of the engine and of a car or a vehicle. And he's tightening the screws and doing all that. Same screwdriver, three different people using it in three different ways. The gifts of the spirit can be ex expressed in different ways 
at the body of Christ. But it is the same Holy Spirit. It is the same God. Some people can prophesy in a certain way. Some people can prophesy in a different way. Right? Some people get visions. Some people get words. Some people can minister healing by laying on of hands. Some people just say it out. So it's not how it's done, but through whom it's done. That's what matters. Right? Meaning, is it done through God? Has God really touched their lives? Has there been the working of the Holy Spirit? Right? So that is more important. Same tool. Three different operations, three different ways of using it, right? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Every believer can have the gifts of the Spirit released through us. Okay, now let's look at that list. Verse 8 onwards brings out the whole list. For the one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. First one, word of wisdom. Second one, word of knowledge through the same spirit. Third one, faith by the same spirit. Four, to another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. Five, to another, the working of miracles. Six, to another, prophecy. Seven, to another, discerning of spirits. Eight, to another, the gifts of tongues. And nine, the interpretation of tongues. All nine given by one, one Holy Spirit. And I, and I think you, you, you may have heard this example, right? If you're going to uh, the hospital to pray for somebody who is sick, what is it that we will do? What's the first thing we must do? We'll say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for this person in the hospital. So what is the gift you're going to ask for? You're not going to ask for discerning of the Spirit or interpretation of tongues. It's not going to work. I mean, you don't need that. You don't need interpretation of tongues when you're going to pray for a sick person. What do you need? You need the working of miracles. Right? Yes, I think there's a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, healing. Sorry, I think I'll have to. Sorry, I'll just have to send it. just keeps going blank when I. Yeah. So, for example, somebody is, you know, a friend or a family member is very distraught, is going through a troubled time or is going through a difficult time. What is what is the gift you're going to ask for? You no point of asking for gift of healing at that time or interpretation of tongues. It's not going to help. Say, God, as I'm going to minister to this person, give me a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge. What should I say to him? Or give me a prophetic word. Right? Now it could be a combination of those three also. The Holy Spirit can say, you know, this is what happened in his life, but you tell that is a word of knowledge. And then you tell him this, right? A word of wisdom. Or you tell him this is what's going to happen to him or her in the future. That's a word of prophecy. So you see that this is a combination. The gifts are being used as a combination. Right? So we must use the right tool in the right place. I can't take a screwdriver and where there is, you know, a, a, a place where you have to use the spanner, I can't use the screwdriver and say, oh, it's not working. It's not going to work because I have the wrong tool. Right? I need to take the spanner and use it to open the, the bolts. Right? So as believers, understand that we can ask the holy spirit right and it happens over seasons right there's training there's equipping uh you you and i need to continue to speak to the holy spirit continue to have fellowship with the holy spirit hear from him hear from god's word and you know just begin to make it a lifestyle right and then we'll begin to see that hey yes the holy spirit is really speaking to me i'm really able to give a word of knowledge uh, uh, sometimes we feel it's our own feeling and we may not release it, right? So the mistake I made many times is I wouldn't release the word because I felt, oh, this is what I feel. Then I learned that I need to release it. 
and many times I've released a word of knowledge and I and they've come back to me and said, hey, that is for me. And I realized, hey, it is the Holy Spirit working in me. He's just giving me that nudge, that word or that picture. I better be obedient to it. If I don't, I'm suppressing the gift. And then I can't say, God, why am I not working in this? No. So it all comes by exercising. And a good place to exercise uh, these gifts of the Spirit is in smaller settings, right? Life groups, small groups, Bible studies with your friends. You're praying for, you know, one on one. Just begin to exercise, right? Uh, it's not like the gifts of the Holy Spirit will work only when there are hundreds of people or thousands. No, if you're ministering to one person also, the Holy Spirit will minister the gifts through us, right? Verse 11, but one and same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills, right? Now, distributing to each one individually implies that all of these nine gifts can be released to each one of us. And this whole thing of as he wills is something that has been very debatable, right? The Holy Spirit releases these gifts as he chooses, right? But later on, he Paul goes on to say, you desire for it. Our part is to desire. And when we correctly, when we earnestly desire uh, the, the gifts, and know how to correctly express the gifts, we will work with the Holy Spirit to manifest the gifts. He will, he wills, meaning he, he's willing to uh, give us, but we must be willing, cooperating, deserve, desiring, we must have faith uh, in releasing those gifts properly, right? Many a times I have, uh, for example, I've, I've received a prophetic word, but I've released it the wrong way. Right. I have say I've got the prophetic word. I knew it's from God, but I released it the wrong way. Right. So we must also understand that as he gives us, he gives us as he wills, and, and we must release those gifts. Right. The prophetic word is from God, but when it comes out of our mouth, we know we need not have to add those extra well, you know, that Indian word which is masalas. Right, for it to sound uh, or taste very good, we don't need to do that, right? This is what the Lord is saying. You know, this is, you don't have to do all that. You get a prophetic word, just say, "Hey, this is what I sensed." So some things that we learn is use the right words. That you know is very important. This is what I sense. The Lord is speaking to me. Uh, this is what I believe. This is what you know. So uh, avoid giving date and time. Right, unless you're hundred percent sure that this is what God has said, right? Because we know that God, for God, date and time is it's all up to Him, right? Of course, there are times when God will say, "Okay, six months from now, this so, But if that you need to be certain, right? Uh, otherwise, just say, you know, I sense this is. Uh, if they say no, it's all right, right? You're you're still continuing to hear from the Holy Spirit. Uh, nobody's going to tag you as a false believer and all of those things. Right? So don't worry about it. Um, begin to manifest in the gifts. Right? So verse 12 onwards, he talks about the functions of the body. Right? Verse 12. Sorry. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we are Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free. All have been made, made to drink into that one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot, now Paul is bringing this, you see how beautifully he's bringing this. The moment we start reading it, it becomes a picture in our mind. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not of the body, it is therefore not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? He's saying if the foot should say, hey, I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body. No, it is part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body. Is it not of the body? It is of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would you be hearing? If the whole body was hearing, what would you be smelling? But now God has set members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. 
and if they they were all one member where would the body be but now indeed there are many members yet one body and the eye cannot say to the hand i have no need of you nor again the head to the feet i have no need of you no much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable on these we bestow greater honor and our unpresentable parts have greater modesty but our presentable parts have no need but god composed the body having given greater honor to that part which lacks it that there should be no schisms in the body but that the members should have the same care for one another and if one member suffers all the members suffer with it or if one member is honored all the members rejoice with it now you are the body of christ and members individually so beautifully he writes this right he says listen we all are one body but in this one body we are different members some can be pastors teachers apostles prophets worship leaders uh, you know children's church leaders all you know audio team setup team whatever you're doing your different parts of the body and all of you are equally important to the body because all of you have different roles and functions in the body now the moment i say okay i don't need a this this uh, sound and setup team example right if i don't need sound and setup team in the by in, in the church now we know that it's needed especially uh, here in bangalore in our church we need the sound and setup team right without that the whole service is not going to happen right well, okay i don't need a graphics team i can preach i can do everything on my own no that is equally important as preparing and you know uh, doing the preparing for the sermon or preparing for the uh, the worship leader everything is important what if we prepared everything and nobody comes to church then it's it's i mean it's, it's just there's no unity we must understand that <clears throat> this body is one but we all have different roles and we are not to look down upon any of those all of us must learn to appreciate and celebrate one another's gifts and functioning so if i'm a pastor i must appreciate others right i i really enjoy watching the you know in our team we have graphics designers and the way they make the graphics are uh, i really enjoy the way they do it it's so wonderful it looks so nice there's so much of effort that goes in it may not be something very spiritual but it's needed what about the media team it's needed right it's not something very spiritual right but they need we need to appreciate celebrate each other hey god we thank you for them because for, because of them they were getting the audio so good and the the video is so good the media is doing well the graphics is going out reaching out to different parts of the world and so they're doing such a wonderful job and people are seeing our banners and seeing these posters and they they are liking it thank god for them we are doing the part of the ministry meaning ministering of the word of god or preaching and teaching but they are equally important they may not be on stage every sunday they may just be in the background but they are equally important as those who are on the stage right so the problem now is you know those who go on the stage think that they are in the higher space higher you know they are higher than everyone else no paul is bringing this understanding and he's saying understand the body is not complete without all of us the smallest part also needs to be given order right just like how in you know one part of the body you now for example if you get a headache why why is it that you want to sleep why is your whole body paining why does the whole body pain we got a headache and you feel head is aching then slowly your eyes pain you you know your you feel nauseous you feel like you just want to lie down you then you you know you just feel so uneasy your whole body is 
just because of a headache or what if you have a small pain on your knees right uh, or on your legs and the whole body is affected but it's, it's a small knee no i can't say okay forget i don't want this knee no we need it right so I, I like that verse god gives greater honor to what seems to have less honor what seems weaker is actually necessary and hence very important what seems hidden actually receives greater honor and must not be treated lightly you know one of the things we have in our church at bangalore apc bangalore is you know a wonderful sound and setup team the team comes at 6 a.m in the morning and they don't come you know they're all working professionals right and they come at 6 a.m and it's not to just sit and talk it's to carry speakers and cables and all these heavy things that they have to carry around uh, from one place to another set up everything it's a hard task so they keep everything ready and 10 o'clock the service starts 10 30 the service starts now we are seeing the bigger picture no we are seeing okay wow wonderful the live streaming has started but what's happened previous 6 a.m you know the steam has come set up everything right and uh, it's not like we're going to you know appreciate them and clap for them everyone and every now and then no but they do receive great honor right we we honor them we honor their hard work it's a it's it's they're doing it not because uh they have to do it but they're doing it because they love god and 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 it's so wonderful right without them it would be so difficult right and and same way even for those who are ministering right we we need to flow in the gifts of the spirit so the apostle paul listed out nine gifts of the spirit and the apostle apostle paul talks about the functions that each believer has nine gifts but there are limitless membership gifts or functions uh, of the body right so we can serve in any kind of way if it is if you feel that god is calling you to uh, arrange chairs do it faithfully if you feel god is calling you to you know just be a greeter in the church do it faithfully it's not like the greeter is not uh, valued he is he or she is greatly valued in the church right so so be willing to serve in whatever function right now just because you're a greeter don't say okay only those who are on the pulpit those who are ministering can flow in prophecy and word of knowledge and gifts no you can be a greeter and still have prophetic words and word of knowledge right so don't limit yourself because of your uh, of your function within the church right uh, the ministry gifts can work through all of us right uh, right so here there's a small illustration here right nine gifts of the holy spirit the membership gifts in romans 12 6 to 8 and then the five ministry gifts so we see here that the fivefold ministry is here ephesians 4 11 that's given to some of them but the membership gifts is given to all of them the nine gifts of the spirit is given to all of them right now some of them are called to be pastors some of them are called to be apostles but all of us can flow in the membership gifts and the nine gifts of the holy spirit right but now when we look at it you no know, sometimes we come to a place i think the church sometimes we we interpret things the wrong way we must not say okay only if i'm a pastor i can flow in this gifts or if i'm an evangelist or a prophet only then i can flow no it's given to all of us right all of us oh the membership gifts and the nine gifts is for all of us so we don't have to limit ourselves right uh, verse 28 onwards Paul is talking about the different ministry functions, right? He says, and God has appointed these in church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? 
Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Now let's see what he says after that. But earnestly desire the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Right? So Paul is saying there are different, right? Now it, it says here Greek when, when when he says first, it does not mean first in uh, uh, in influence, meaning it's a portion, right? God has placed some people to be in that role, right? Apostles, prophets, teachers, helps. Again, various kinds of assistance within the church. Administration. Imagine a church without administration. Right now, remember in the church in Jerusalem, they all of a sudden they grew uh, to thousands of people. Imagine there's no administration. How to deal with the people? Very important. You need to have a good administration, a good rule on how to, uh, you know function as a church as a ministry we must have right a good administrator uh, who can you know stir the ship so to speak right um, and then the apostle paul makes a list uh, of ministry gifts here then the ministry gifts we see miracles uh, and gifts of healings which are representative of an evangelist and then the membership gifts are helps, administration, varieties of tongues. Now, all of this, right? All of this, Paul is saying, whatever you do, earnestly desire the best gift. What is the best gift? If, is it prophecy? Is it word of knowledge? Is it being, uh, is it, uh, you know, working of miracles? No. The best gift simply means to desire the appropriate gift at the appropriate time right best suited for the occasion and we looked at that example right if you're praying for a sick person don't ask for a uh, interpretation of tongues right ask for the gift so ask for the best gift that can be used at the at that time right so that's what best is now the wrong understanding would be okay prophecy is the best gift or healings is the best gift no Right, so so that's why understanding the style of writing is also very important. Right, earnestly desire these spiritual gifts. Now, I like the word earnestly. Right, we are to earnestly desire for it, not just for wrong reasons. Right, sometimes we say, okay, I want to. If we have reasons like you know, I want to be known, I want to become popular, or I want people to know my name. Uh, I want to be on the stage all the time. Uh, I'd seen others doing it, so I would also like to do it the same way. It's not about all of that. Right? Paul is saying, earnestly desire the best gift. Right? When you're earnest about something, when you say, okay, God, I want it because I want it to be, I, I desire this gift so that I can flow in this gift and I can be a blessing to the people around me, blessing to the body of Christ. Uh, I want the prophetic gift. I want to speak a prophetic word so that I can be a blessing, not so that everyone can look at me and say, oh, he's a prophet or he, God is speaking only to him, not because of that, but because I can be a blessing to the body of Christ, that I can bless people, that, it can en that I can encourage people. Uh, so when we earnestly have, with the right motives, we ask God, God is one who will release those gifts to us. And something that I'm personally praying for is God to help me in, in terms of, you know, when I speak in tongues, help me to understand. Like, like I not always we will understand, but, uh, you know, the Bible says that we speak, Paul says, right, we're speaking uh, to mysteries to God. Uh, but there is also this thing of uh, interpretation of tongues. So many a times we can pray and we're praying in tongues. Many a times, you know, I sense that this is what God is speaking to me. I'm not sure about it, but I feel that this is what God is speaking. Right? So this is some area that we can you know, continue to grow in. Or maybe it's a prophetic right? or, or a word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Uh, just, just continue to minister in those gifts. Right? And I think as Bible college students, the more you practice and learn and just ask the Holy Spirit 
to minister, to speak to you. You know, this first half you keep listening to our sessions, the word of God. So go back, maybe after your sessions are over, think about what you studied. Ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you through what you've studied. Right. And he begins to minister to each one of us. Right. So any questions, any thoughts before we close? Okay, Christopher says, please explain the gift of faith. Okay, uh, sorry, Christopher, I'm just seeing the chat now. The gift of faith is now there are two: the ministry uh, of faith, of the the ministry of those who have this gift of faith, and there's a gift of faith, right? So uh, there are people who have extreme faith. Now remember one thing: faith is something that grows. It can increase or decrease. Well, how do we know that? Jesus said in three places, he said, Oh, you of no faith. Then he asks another, uh, the disciples, where is your faith? And he says to the Roman centurion, you have great faith. So three. right? So the gift of faith is something that increases over time, over our experience, over our relationship with God. Now, if you look at this as an example, if no. Uh, we may have accepted Christ, and the first year we may not be, you know, f walking in that high level of faith. But ten years down the line, we're not having the same faith. Right, our faith has increased, and so again, the gift of faith is a gift given by the Holy Spirit. But you and I have to exercise it. Right, we need to exercise that gift uh, by stepping out of our you know, comfort areas, stepping out of our, uh, you know, our, our places where we feel that, okay, this is where I'm convenient. No. So faith requires us to step into the water, right? So over time, faith is something that can increase. And then there's faith that can also decrease, right? If we're not walking in communion with God, if you're not you know, slowly, you know, people tend to lose faith and they go away from the faith itself. Right, so Christopher, faith is something that is, you know, oh, it, it grows over time, over experience, over just, uh, you know, continuing to fellowship with God. Right. So, how is it different from the faith we need to develop as a Christian? Okay. So, the gift of faith, it's the same. So, for example, uh, when God gives us the gift of faith, um, there is a certain kind of faith. We all have faith that, okay, Jesus died on the cross. Right? That's simple faith. Jesus died on the cross. But there's also this other uh, faith that we need um, uh, to, not just the basics, but to go into the greater things, to walk into the greater measures of faith. So like I said, Christopher, it is something that grows over time. So when you look at these evangelists, these great men and women of God, they are people who have grown over time, right? And and so we also can grow in our faith over time as well. So I hope that briefly answers your question, Christopher. Yes. Sir. All right. So thank you so much uh, for joining. Have a great week ahead. Uh, let's just quickly close in prayer. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the class that we had. And even as we learn to God to... Uh, the benefits that we have in partaking in the Lord's table and uh, and all the blessings that you've blessed us with. I pray, God, that you help us to walk in that blessing in each of our lives, God, and continue to minister to each of us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead. God bless.